Here's footage of the alleged miracle in Guadalajara. In light of this alleged miracle, I wanted to bring a cardiologist on, someone that knows the heart well. Fortunately, I'm blessed to have a father-in-law who's been a cardiologist for 37 years. And in that time, how many of these heart ultrasounds have you looked at? Many, many thousands. I mean, well over 10,000. What was your first response? A lot of people were like, wow, this looks like a heartbeat. We saw videos where they you know, pulled up this uh, echocardiogram to try to compare that. What were your thoughts when you first saw this? Well, definitely, I, I enjoyed looking at it. Uh, it, um, it looked definitely like a heartbeat. Um, and it did have a very rhythmic uh, pulsations. Uh, I did try to time it. It was about 80 per minute. And, so what is that in perspective? Well, on an electrocardiogram, we say between 60 and 100 is considered normal sinus rhythm or normal rhythm for normal rate. So, I mean, some people will have lower rates, especially some athletes and people in good shape or people with some sore hearts will be below that. We'll call that bradycardia and we'll call people with higher heart rates tachycardia. Um, but for uh, this is right smack in the middle of normal, you know, right. uh, 80 per minute. Realistically, if this is a miracle, we'll get to that part in a little bit, this would be the glorified body of Jesus. So it wouldn't be his heart beating at a fast pace like during his passion or something like that. So that is good to hear as well. Mm -hmm. Many of you may know that I'm making a movie on Eucharistic miracles. We actually just filmed The Crucifixion this past weekend, and it was so amazing to see this come to life. We need help to finish this film. So if you could support us at our website, I'll link it above. You would say from a cardiologist's perspective, it definitely a, appears like a heartbeat. That's what it appears like. Yes, it appears like that. Great. So we'll go into uh, this next portion where we'll talk about potential authenticity, and then we'll go into the area that we should be cautious in uh, to give a final verdict there from our sure. perspective. So um, I looked into the video uh, and the story behind it and whatnot. This was supposedly seen on two different cameras. Um, you'll actually see in the video, the person taking the video and there's a phone that pops up and you can see it also. So it's not like this was um, just seen by one person. So that was good. And supposedly this was shown to the priest immediately after this happened. Uh, so, you know, bring some authenticity from the chain of custody. One thing I noticed was that when the camera was moving around and shaking, the pulsation didn't alter. So it wasn't like it was happening here and then you moved your camera up here and that looked different. It looked the same throughout. So I thought that was really interesting. I will say that I am very skeptical about miracles. Uh, I'm making a movie on Eucharistic miracles and I've looked into this deeply. And uh, it's not something that we just need to rush into and claim everything is a miracle. There's one that happened in Mayo, Ireland, allegedly. Uh, last month, I've emailed the diocese to hopefully get involved in that somehow. But we have to be very careful in proclaiming these miracles. But things like this could be doctored, uh, doctor, you know. Uh, but um, what was your perspective on that? Um, and are you uh, here to claim it as a miracle uh, from that perspective? No, Ray, I agree with you. I, I came, well, I also have um, skeptical um, thoughts about it as well, because I, I, I can imagine that this could, people could try. To make something look like this and, and with all the technology we have you could sort of fake it so um now that that keeping that in mind i mean if god wanted to show us a miracle well then i think if we do the due process and find that it was you know there was no other explanation that there was nobody doing anything uh, trick photography or or some setting up some sort of apparatus to make it look like it was pulsating or some lights or whatever they might do. I mean, if it was just completely innocuous and, and the true host that's consecrated for regular Eucharistic adoration starts doing this, that would be, that would be very beautiful, I would say. And, um, but I think that I, I, I'm very skeptical as well. I wouldn't go and say this is a miracle at all. I would, I would just, I would want to go due process. I would want to go due diligence and get through uh, all the studies about exactly what happened at this moment and who was there and what the witnesses and find out, you know, more information.
Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Cause the technology is really advanced. I mean, even like projection wise, you know, someone could try to project it onto the host yes, or from exactly. the backside or something like yes. that. It's, um, and, and we say all this not to, you know, be Debbie Downers or whatnot, but, and hopefully those skeptics out there are watching are like, Hey, these guys sound reasonable, you know, because we, we don't, I would, it would be so sad if someone said, all right, I'm going to show these Catholics, you know, and they make a video where there's like this, you know, alleged miracle and it looks so authentic. Right. And, and they, they just make it look so good. And then once millions of people have been like, yeah, this is it, this is it. They pull, you know, the rug out from underneath and say, I actually did that just to show, you know, how uh, irrational you all are and whatnot, you know? Right, so right. these are things we have yeah. to be conscious of, but these are things that I have taken into account in researching Eucharistic miracles myself and tried to, to, you know, walk down the line from a skeptic perspective and see, okay, this is, this is beyond natural explanation. You know, yes. this is, you know, this claim is refuted by this and, you know, kind of go through it that way. It's yeah. very important to be balanced in that way. Of course, you know, if this is a miracle, you know, I'd be so excited. And I have heard of a Eucharistic miracle happening in Guadalajara um, recently, not, you know, not like last week, but a couple of years ago that was unfortunately not investigated. And, you know, many of us know Mexico is a very faithful uh, Catholic country. So I wouldn't be surprised. And especially with, as I mentioned, the one before potentially last month, a Eucharistic miracle happening in Ireland. Um, God, as I've said before, God is, you know, bringing more Eucharistic miracles to light in these days where faith seems to be dwindling, you know, as a, as a way to show like, here I am, but we want to be certain on that and uh, have a, a confirmation from the church before we go out and, um, and, you know, put all of our eggs in that basket, if that makes sense. It does. Ray, and you bring up a good point there that, you know, you mentioned that, well, you know, sort of saying, alluding, why are there Eucharistic miracles? I mean, you said, you know, our faith is dwindling, and that's very true. Like, most of, or some of the Eucharistic miracles, you know, have occurred because of somebody's lack of faith, almost that Jesus wanted to show them that, that he's truly present. And, and yet, St. Thomas, you know, said, oh, yes, I'll believe in Christ when I, if I can see him, if I can touch him. And, and yet Christ says to him, when he does appear, happy are those who have not seen, but believe. Mm -hmm. And those are the words of Christ. And they're to us too. You know, happy are we if we can believe without seeing. And so, yes, what do we believe as Catholic? We believe that the blessed sacrament, that the consecrated host is Jesus himself, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. It looks like bread. You know, it tastes like bread. But it's Christ himself, and that's what faith tells us. And happy are we if we believe that. We don't need a miracle. Miracles are wonderful if God wants, wishes to bestow them upon us and to help the church and help the faith of, of people, especially if they're lacking or struggling in the faith, and to bring people to the faith. But we shouldn't have to need a miracle for that. Yes. Happy are we if we can believe in him without that. And, you know, I wouldn't need a miracle at this point to believe that. And um, praise God, if he, if he, if he wants miracles, if he, if it in his will, he wants these miracles to become apparent for people to understand it, it would be wonderful to bring people back to Christ, back to the truth, back to the presence of the Eucharist. Yes. Where he said he is. And so Christ never left us. He's with us today. And you know that, and I know that the world needs to know that. Exactly. And that's why I'm praying that this Eucharistic miracle movie will help impact that. And I, I always say to people, this movie, this Eucharistic miracle movie that we're calling the new manna um, is it's a, a vehicle through Eucharistic miracles to teach people about the Eucharist, you know, um, so that they believe not because of the, not because of these miracles, but because Christ said so. They may open their exactly. eyes and, and get them to look at it in a different way. And uh, it's going to be amazing. So, Dad, I really appreciate your time. And uh, it's great to hear from your perspective that this could be a miracle from a cardiologist's perspective. This does seem, um, you know, legitimate, but there is uh, proper caution needed. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please like it and share it with others. This is a very timely thing. So I think it's good for people to see, um, especially those that are outside of the church, that there are people like you know, Dr. Lanzalotti here, who, you know, have studied the heart for years and say, okay, this could be it, you know, 
Um, but, you know, we're very cautious, you know, so people see that we are a church of faith and reason, right? My dad here has gone to mass for decades, every single day, goes and prays at church every single day, a very holy man, mm-hmm. right? He has that faith, but there's also that reason that we have to be balanced and, uh, uh, I guess, strategic in our approach. So, um, Absolutely right. yes, this is a message that needs to be heard and, uh, please help us do that. Thank you so much for your time, dad. Oh, you're very welcome, Ray. It was my pleasure to be with you. Yes. Well, you all have a blessed day and God love you.